them about the importance of including other people, including everyone, um, as we go about our lives, and, and how art plays into that, and how art can communicate some of those really important messages. And working with students here, um, and, and working with students here, um, we're going to create a mural on here, and, and he's going to help us. He's a, he's, you've probably seen a lot of he's got work all over the place, right? He's got work around, and he'll probably talk about some of that. You might have seen some of his work in the area. Um, he does a lot of work that's open to the public, so you'll see it on the side of the building and things like that. Um, so I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm going to turn it over to Five, and, and please be a good audience. Listen to him. Um, he's got a lot of great things to say and a lot of really interesting stories about his life to tell us. So. How much time total do I have? Um, you're here, I think, until was it rest of the day? Pretty much. Pretty, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know, but well, I mean, this particular. Uh, uh, lunch start. What time is it? Lunch start. Um, right now it's twelve oh two, so until one twenty. What time is it? Well, the last thing of it, the, we're gonna take a the break, right? The last lunch, the fifth lunch. Uh, last lunch. Oh, I can wait for. Yeah. Thank you. Just because I know I'm having short the keynote, so we can actually yeah, start yeah. anything. Probably about an hour. Probably about an hour. Total hour. Yeah, for now. Right, so the first, session, talking, yeah. first session and then the second session will be so about 80 minutes. So I won't talk long. I wish you guys to kind of help out with the artwork. Um, but yes, I go by Five Fingers. Uh, people always ask me. I got the name when I was around 13, 14. With my friends, we started a rap group. I was a DJ. A friend of mine passed away. kind of nicknamed me that, so I kept that name. Um, and then, so I started artwork. Like many artists, like when I was young, and I was uh, in kindergarten. I kind of, I kind of uh, every cartoon that I loved to watch. Like I would get home from school, pause it, I'd tape a piece of paper because we had no, I we had no iPads. So I take a piece of paper on the TV and kind of just trace everything that I saw on the TV to kind of learn how to draw figures, hands, transformers, all kinds of cartoons, and then same thing with comedy. So I started doing that, and then. Um, uh, it progressed slowly but surely into, into graffiti. So when I was around 14, 15, I was in high school, I went to North High. Um, I played basketball, I played baseball, I played football. But then I would catch a train on the weekend with a bunch of my boys and we'd go into the Bronx, into Brooklyn, New York City, and I would follow the older kids and we would do graffiti like at Five Points and all kinds of buildings. So we would just tag our names and everything. So that became a passion of mine within the art world was, you know, I dealt with anxiety, depression, through getting my artwork out on paper and on walls. And it kind of, that kind of uh, made everything like ease up on me, like my brain and everything. Because again, I had a lot of severe depression and I was a very shy kid too. So um, moving forward, like by the time I became a sophomore or a junior, um, I would go to New York City with a couple of my friends. And then as a junior, as many of you know, you start thinking about college. So a teacher of mine, a guidance counselor, one trip after I got back from New York City and I had fun with my friends, um, she had asked me what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And that's such a heavy question when you're 16, 17 years old, when you're just hanging out with your friends and I got involved with Ronald Brown. And I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And this kind of made me fall back into depression because I would go home and I'm like, I don't know what I wanna do for them. So at 17, nobody really knows, right? So, and you don't want to be involved in the art somehow. And um, so, you know, I got home and I started thinking, I started racking my brain and then I talked to my art teacher and she was like, well, you know, I want you to get away from that crowd that you've been running with. I lost two, the rapper guy was one of them, I lost two good friends when I was 16 uh, to street violence. And she was like, I kind of want you to get away from that. So I want you to start focusing more on art and maybe um, not so much fine art or graffiti, but maybe you can go into graphic design. You guys know what graphic design is? So um, she was like, go into graphic design, marketing, and then you can make a living and then paint on the side. So essentially that's what I did. Like, I graduated high school. I didn't get into accepted into any colleges. I didn't know what I wanted to do for a living, so I didn't apply to any colleges. My grade point average was enough to graduate. So I, uh, that summer I decided, my parents were like, you gotta do something. Can't stay at home and hang out with your friends, or and do nothing, or you gotta have to get a full-time job. So I signed up for NCC, and then I realized that they had a basketball. So I went to the coach and I said, "Can I try out?" 
you know, I tried out, I became a walk on at NCC a junior in college. So I was like, this is it, I'm gonna become a basketball player. And mind you, I'm not the tallest, but I was just like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna work hard and become a basketball player. So I worked hard, I went to camps, I went everywhere. Um, and then I started talking to University of Vermont about a potential scholarship. And then uh, a month later, when I went to go visit them, when I came back, I found out my girlfriend at the time was pregnant. So I decided that I knew I had to get down to it. I knew I had to do something because all of a sudden I'm 19, 20, and I'm facing all this huge responsibility. So again, the pressure set in. And I realized that the only thing that always pulled me out was art. So I started getting back into it. I started taking it serious. Um, I finished at NCC for a graphic design program. But for me, if anyone that plays sports and when you're competitive, you know that that's not enough. I wanted to see it all the way through. I wanted, I wanted to just finish it and get my bachelor's degree. No one in my family ever graduated from high school. So I applied to every school. My grades weren't the best. I had 2.5 at best. Um, I applied to Sacred Heart. And I, um, I was working at a family hospital. I was working uh, at a dat like a data processing plant, which was a boring job. And then um, I applied again. I get myself six months, and then I applied again. Denied again. So what I did was I got in the car, because I knew myself, and I knew I was a different person than I was when I, two years before. So I got in the car, I drove to Sacred Heart, and then I saw my way into the dean's office. And I said, listen. The numbers that you guys are looking and judging me by, I'm not that person. I'm a new person, a brand new dad, and I need to finish school because I have ideas, I know what I'm gonna do with my life. And again, by that time, kids that I graduated high school with were already finishing up college. Some knew before what they wanted to do. They wanted to be doctors, they wanted to be lawyers, they wanted to be uh, actors, actresses. And they had that plan for ninth grade, and I and I can I, I was proud of them for, for having that. But myself, I was frustrated with myself because I realized, and I realize now that everyone's on their own timeline. But comparing yourself, especially in this world today of social media, comparing yourself to the next person's social media, it's not ideal. It, 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 it just didn't sit right with me, and it put myself in pressure. So I had to back from that, and I said, you know what? When I finish, I finish. It's not how you start; it's how you finish. So I, I explained this to the dean, and after two or three hours of not leaving his office, he said, look, because I understand you're not going to go anywhere, I'm going to work on you, on a plan for you to get you into the school. But here's a kicker, which I think he tried to set me up, because he knew that my highest grade point average was 2.5. He said, you have to maintain a 3.5 every semester that you're here for the next two years, or else you're done. So I said, bet. I, I shook his hand and I said, fantastic, let's do it. So those two years went by. I had an average of 3.6, graduated with a 3.8, finally finished, and I was proud of myself because this was a small feat. Some kids finish on time, they're done, but for me, this was a big feat. First person in my family to graduate ever. So I went into the real world, I became an advertiser, the designer. I thought I had made it in my mind, this was fantastic. But then again, depression and anxiety started setting in because in my mind, this still wasn't fulfilling who I was. So I went, on my off days, what I did was I did painting for friends. So I painted dogs, I painted beautiful sky, sun settings, and, and everything that made me happy. And I said, I have to go this route because this is what made me was painting and drawing. This is what made me happy. So I gathered all my favorite paintings, put them in a portfolio, walked to New York City, walked around New York City, walked to Stanford, walked around Stanford. I went to every city, presented my artwork. And artists know, and you, put your, you wear your art on your sleeve. So when you present your artwork, it's who you are. You, you're exposing your soul. So when I present the artwork, and there, every single place said no. Every single place said this is not what we're looking for. This is not what we want. This isn't the art we want. So it just crushed me every time. So fast forward, I two years later, I went to a show in Brooklyn. And it was a friend of mine. It was an all feminist art show, and I was supporting my friends. And there was this woman in there. It was this yogi. She is very spiritual. And I kind of walked by her, and like we kind of talked. 
And she said, listen, um, I told her, I said, listen, she said, you sometimes, when you paint, you know, you meditate. So for me, I needed to calm my mind. And I told her, I said, look, I can't meditate. I can't shut my mind off. It's constantly going, constantly going. She was like, so paint. Paint as much as you can. So I said, awesome, fantastic. So what I did was I got back home, I started painting and painting. And I painted three or four different paintings a night. And I was constantly painting. By the time the month, the two months that were over, I had 600 paintings in my studio because I would write and paint, write and paint, and draw whatever came to my mind. So essentially, that's what kind of sent me to where I was, where one time I grabbed, and in my presentation, you see the picture, one time I grabbed a big canvas and I was frustrated. So I turned it around and I painted, don't tell me what to paint on the back of it. Posted on social media, it got a good traction, and then the same, three of the same galleries that turned me down wanted to hang that painting up. It was just funny, it was full circle. And this was just words, graffiti words, written sloppily with black paint on the back of the canvas. So they were like, this is more what we want. We want you to show, show the world who you are. So moving forward, that's what I started doing. And I started just pushing it more and more. And I started using my artwork as a, as a verbal diary, where sometimes it was just notes that I took down. Or in my travels, I ran into people and strangers, and I had conversations with them. And they would say a line, and I would write it down. And I would write down thoughts. And, and then I, when I got back to the studio, I would just paint on this. If it was just one word, sentence, all kinds of work. So when I was in Chicago, uh, there were some hateful 